Pachunque El Onion. cultural phenomenon that fused the 90s club scene, maximum minimalism and digital entertainment. The year was 1995. I was 10 years of age. The number one single in the UK was Think Twice by Celine Dion. Batman Forever was the highest grossing movie across the pond in the States. Manchester United unfortunately won their third Premier League title and the world was on tenderhooks for the OJ Simpson verdict. The gaming scene was by and large regarded as something for male-only individuals that were socially inept. For individuals that felt safer in the confines of their own four walls, happy to socially distance themselves before it became government policy. A far cry then from the billion dollar industry currently propped up by gargantuan titles such as Fortnite, Minecraft and Roblox. These attitudes would not remain however, they would rapidly shift and directly collide with the 90s club culture and anti-establishment aesthetics from the designer's republic like an atom bomb. The Sony PlayStation, released in November 1994 in Japan and eventually September 1995 in the US and EU territories, launched with a number of interesting games, but none quite so groundbreaking as Wipeout. I remember it distinctly, wandering into my local electronics store to pass a bit of time. It was winter, long nights illuminated only by orange street lighting and passing headlights. Celine Dion was on the radio all the time. Indoors beneath long tubes of off-white fluorescence, a beacon of maximum minimalism glittered in my direction. The box was decorated with bright, heavy typography, an advanced looking extraterrestrial iconography akin to something from Predator. If you haven't seen the 1987 classic, alien iconography is used towards the end of the movie to signify the hero's impending doom when the antagonist Predator activates its self-destruct sequence. I had never seen anything so grandiose in my then 10 years on Earth. You might even consider it gaudy. It was my first introduction to the Designers Republic, and it was glorious. Based in Sheffield, England, the Designers Republic was founded by Ian Anderson and Nick Phillips in 1986. At their inception, Anderson would design flyers for the band person to person. He went on to say, I'd had no training, but I'd been doing posters for one-off clubs that I ran in Sheffield. The band, person to person, liked the stuff that I was doing and asked me to do their sleeves as well. We do it for ourselves because we enjoy doing it and all the bright colours and high contrasts, the insignia, the trimming are part and parcel of what we like. Thankfully, other people like it too. Even back in the hazy days of the late 80s, their jokey, playful attitude was on full show. One of the best moments was when we seen a piece in Cut magazine. It wasn't a review of Kiss the Record, but a review of the sleeve. This bloke had tried to decipher everything on the back. It was brilliant. Everything we'd ever wanted to do in terms of playing visual games, no disrespect to the punter, had come true. They would go on to create many sleeves, including the iconic artwork for the 1987 song Don't Get Mad, Get Even, the New York remixes by Age of Chance, which was featured in Q Magazine's 100 Best Record Covers of All Time in 2001. I didn't own a PlayStation at the time of its release, it was much too expensive and most folk were probably still uncertain if it would have any sort of success. Sega and Nintendo had been duking it out since the early 90s and they were household names. How on earth could Sony compete with these two? Surely a Herculean task was ahead of them. Evidently, Sony had their finger on the pulse of youth culture considerably more than their competitors. If you visited any large nightclub in London, you could expect there to be chillered areas for one-on-one -on -one time with the PlayStation. Wipeout, and later Wipeout 2097, with its The Designer Republic artwork, an incredible made-to-measure electronic soundtrack featuring the Chemical Brothers, Underworld, the future sound of London, and The Prodigy, really was the culmination of 1990s artistic merit coming together in one neat little interactive package. Rick Poynor from Creative Review 
In their era-defining work for Sony's Wipeout PlayStation games in the mid to late 90s, they achieved probably their biggest international audience, and their graphic imagery was even applied within the games, producing a seamless relationship between packaging and content. By 1997, there were 52 clubs in the UK alone with dedicated PlayStation rooms. Sony's other regional offices caught on, and the company was soon sponsoring extreme sports events and music festivals around the world, including Big Love, Tribal Gathering, and later Lollapalooza. For the third iteration of Wipeout, three years had passed since the launch of 2097, a bit of a swung song for the PlayStation, as the PlayStation 2 was just around the corner, ready to rally in a new generation of titles. As for the cover art of Wipeout 3, the Designers Republic still incorporating their trademark style, but undeniably more muted. Whereas in the past, maximum minimalism would have been appropriate, this very much felt like straight up minimalism, matured almost, grown up and detached from the gaudy but glorious styling of Wipeout and Wipeout 2097. The intro seemed more considered, more measured in its approach as well. Boot the game up and after loading, you'll be greeted with the usual brief flashes of the Designer Republic's aesthetics. You'll then be greeted with the construction or deconstruction, depending on how you look at it, of a ship played in reverse. Once the pieces of the ship come together, so too does the music. An ambient drone that again seems to set a much more mature scene. There aren't many design agencies that I would fawn over, but it would be fair to say that none have had quite the same impact on me as the Designers Republic have. So much of their artwork reflects the 90s perfectly and still looks incredible 25 years after the inception of Wipeout. A perfect intersection of graphic design, electronic music and games. 